This is a freedom model S. Uh, this is not the ST or the STW. This is Freedom's first uh, fully automatic, or as they call it, super automatic calculator. Uh, some of the differences between this one and the ST are that the S, or the S stands for super automatic, the ST stands for super automatic tabulating, and the ST has a row of buttons here, I think either here or here. Anyway, it has a row of buttons um, related to positions in the counter register. When you press those in, they act as a tab stop. So when you push the tab key, it only shifts out to whatever one you've pushed in. Uh, the system doesn't have a tab key. The ST has a key right here that says div tab. When you push that, it will move the carriage out either to the first tab stop or all the way out to the end and then enter whatever number you have on the keyboard, enter that in for division. Uh, since this is not tabulating, it does not have that. Um, it was also here that we have two levers for division instead of the two buttons that the ST had. I believe this model was introduced in 1936 and manufactured up until 1952. So this one has some issues. Um, we'll just plug it in here and see what it does. So plug it in. That really fixed itself. That's still locked though. So you can see the add key goes in, pops back up, but the machine keeps running. And all the other keys are locked. But unplug it. Stop the mid cycle. So, can you see the counter? Yeah, see how this one's half flipped? It means to stop halfway through, so I'll just nudge it a little bit. There you go, now it's all the way through. I should be able to clear this. I can, but I can't clear this because it's still engaged because the mechanism has not released from the add state. I can push stuff in on the keyboard, and if I plug it back in, Oh, it must have released something, okay. It must be partially disengaging without fully disengaging because I still can't clear this. And if I try to turn these, these are all locked. However, if I turn this one over here, can you see that? This one over here turns because it's not, I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing or not. It's in the shade. Anyway. You have to trust me that this, this button, this knob here, does turn the digit wheel because this one is off the edge of the machine, or off the edge of the mechanism, so it's not engaged. Um, but all of these ones here that are engaged um, can't turn them because they're engaged. But if I put a number here and hit add, you see that it's adding it in. If I clear, it'll stop adding it in except for that column because it must be stuck. Now it's stuck, so that must be a little bit sticky as far as disengaging there. So you just know about that. So we'll have to take this apart. Let's take this apart and see if we can free this mechanism up. Um, I'm not even going to try the multipliers. See, that's all full up with numbers. I have to see what we can you know, reset that somehow. So we'll start by finding a big enough screwdriver. Taking these off. And these have a little spring under them. Because they are two position knobs to engage or disengage. I'm just going to clear it. see the spring there on that screw. So that off because these you can either turn them that way. I, mean, I can't do it now, but 
um, because of this automatic return clear button. So if you turn it that way, it should disengage from that. So you push return clear, it won't clear this register. If you turn it that way, it will engage and clear this register when you push return clear. And there's four screws inside of the carriage here that have to come out. I hope that I don't have to take the carriage off this machine. I've never taken the carriage off of Freedom before. And I understand it's not a very enjoyable process because apparently there's some sort of array of ball bearings on springs inside the carriage and when you take the carriage off, all the little ball bearings fall out. So I'm hoping to avoid that mess. Because if that does happen, you have to find them all and somehow get them to stay back in place. And just try and put it back together. So let's see. Okay, so that comes off. You're probably going to have to take all these keys off. If you can get the side off here. I like how they put this like little rubber stripping in. Actually, that's so it's supposed to prevent um, the case from having against itself. I've not seen any other hardware with that feature. I think I mentioned this in my previous videos or not, but uh, Carl Frieden, which was the guy that founded the Frieden Calculating Company, uh, used to work for Merchant. He is the one that designed all of Merchant's machines, such as the EEG and the EA and all of those ones. Okay. So you can see it's just like a little rubber strip that has grooves in it to latch on the case like that. This is just like a vibration thing. So I do have another free and I have a, I do have a model ST and that one had a similar problem to this um, and on that one there's a little mechanism a little lever up here that controls the motor state of the machine, and that was what was getting stuck and not allowing it to shut off. I'll take the back off me as well. So all these screws should be the same size, I don't have to worry about that. This is not the actual plug for this, by the way, that's a plug for my Monroe machine. Kind of interesting how people seem to lose the plugs for these machines. I mean, it's not like a lot of appliances take a plug like that. I think, um, I mean, it's a, just a dual round pin plug. And it looks like something like an old toaster might take, but it's not. Those had a lot wider pin spacing than this did. So I'm not sure what happened to all the plugs for these machines. I think the old line Martians had a plug that was closer to what a toaster might use. Okay. So now we're in the back. See, there's our motor right there. By a suppression capacitor. This lighting setup sucks. It's our carriage shifter up here. Yeah, so watch this. If I move the carriage, see how all the wheels turn? Because they're all still engaged. Uh -oh. I no, I there we go. When I 
keep that in a, a valid state. I want to try and add where the carriage is out of place. Um, probably going to have to take all these keys off and take the keyboard off, so let me do that. So I found part of the problem was uh, this bar right here was not returning all the way home. It was getting stuck. It's still a little bit sticky. Um, I found that when you push a key down, the machine will stay running. But if I unplug it and turn it slowly by hand a few times, it will disengage. So just something is a little bit sticky in there that doesn't have enough time to disengage uh, with the machine running quickly. But when I turn it slowly by hand, it has enough time to disengage and stop the cycle. Um, but I have another problem because the machine is intermittently jamming. Um, I got the carriage to move somewhat, but it's stuck now in this in-between position. And I think the reason is because, um, so if I'll be able to show you, oh no, no. Um, there's a, this machine only runs in one direction and the change between addition and subtraction, there is a set of um, sliders that have gears on both ends and they slide back and forth to engage forward and reverse on each of these individual things. And it seems like that row is stuck and not disengaging like it's supposed to. So right here, this right here is one of them. Can you see that? So there's a gear down here at the bottom and a gear up here on top. And this is supposed to slide up to disengage from the carriage when it's moving so it doesn't get stuck. But it's still engaged. You can see if I turn this, it still turns the wheel on the top and that's not supposed to happen. Now it looks like this is engaged on this shaft, and this shaft is completely frozen. You can see as I pull on this, it moves that just a little bit, but I cannot rotate that shaft at all. So I'm going to look into that and see if I can free that up. So this mechanism right here is what's sticky. This is the main clutch and motor engagement. You see when I push it up, it doesn't auto return like it's supposed to. It's very sticky. So that's why the machine doesn't stop at the end of the cycle. It just is supposed to, like when you when this engages, which any of the keys engage this, um, then the motor's supposed to start and it's supposed to latch in. And at the end of the cycle, it's supposed to release and fall back. Um, so it doesn't start another cycle, but it's obviously not doing that. So I'm going to have to see if I can free that up a little bit. Okay, so it's about looser now. See, it returns on its own. Hopefully that'll be fast enough to stop the cycle. So let's find out. Let's see what happens. And it's still sort of stuck. Let's see, do these return all the way? No. So somehow the um, the carriage got engaged again. Let me figure that out. Okay. So I think we have some progress here. Right now it's in the home position. The carriage is cleared. Try adding one, two, three. See, so added it in there. One, two, three. It's supposed to clear the keyboard. I'm not sure why that's not working. Um, also subtract, three, four, five, six, so that seems to be working. Um, shift hopefully works now. You can see it didn't affect the numbers up there at all. Same going back. That was just a sticking issue. I just had to play around with it for a while, shifting it back and forth a bunch of times, and it seems like that sort of cleared up, hopefully. So let's try a division just for fun. 
and see what happens. Return clear isn't working for some reason. I, when I push this, it just sits there and does nothing, so I have to figure that out. Let's just try division. So we'll shift all the way over. And of course, it added it too many times, didn't it? And then again, so good. It does stick sometimes, yep. There we go. seem like it might have worked. 3.14159292. That's actually right. Cool. So division seems to be working. I'm not sure why it didn't use the full thing here. This that one seems jammed. All these two are free except that one at the end. That's interesting. We didn't even use that position, I don't think. I don't have to figure that out, it's weird. Uh, anyway, division seems to work. So we got return clear to figure out yet, and then of course this multiply, who knows what that's gonna do. Um, yeah. Okay, so the issue with um, carriage clearing, or not carriage clearing, with the last digit of the carriage getting stuck, something that's not in frame, down in here, there's not going to be a shadow, these things are the, um, the counter actuator mechanisms. So it's just a big long bar with a bunch of these little swivelly things on, and the bar, I guess, rotates, I think it goes back and forth. Um, and these little fingers hit the wheels and come to the next position. Maybe it slides back and forth. Anyway, something like that. And um, they're spring-loaded because when it wants to carry, or when it, normally it'll like hit like that and not engage the next wheel until it returns to its home position and then fall back to the normal place like that. Um, when it wants to carry, there's a little cutout on the bottom of each wheel here. Let me see if I can. So I think there is. Here we go. This one has it. See the little notch right there? So that this pin will fall in that notch, this little pin that moves here, will fall in that notch and cause this pin to engage with these teeth right here and turn the next wheel one position. That was two positions, but you get the idea. Uh, this one was gummy, so when I moved it, it would just stay like that and wouldn't snap back. Um, I just want to mention, that's all I use WD-40 for. This is an excellent solvent, not a lubricant. So I put a little WD-40 on there, and it dissolved that old grease real quick, and then I went back with my regular oiler, which is more side of oil now, and put some real oil on it. Uh, the WD-40 will dry out eventually and not provide long-term lubrication like this heavier oil will. And now, to avoid bumping the camera too much, I get everything in frame, spraying oil everywhere. This is a weird division mechanism. Usually you pull the levers down and they stay down until it's done. This one doesn't. They stay, they pop back up while it's working. And see our result. 3141592929 Oh, maybe I'm wrong. 3141592929 
five, nine, oops, maybe it messed up there. That's supposed to be a two, I think. Um, I have to check that out. Uh, this did not stick though, you can see this is nice and good now and I can clear it. Maybe something else is sticking. Let's try that again. I added twice again. I added once. See, that time I think it didn't catch that I pulled both levers. I'm a little gummy. Because see, I think that's uh, no, it's not really two. It's got nine. It's complement. Is there a six there? Do I forget to clear that? Is this my machine messing up or just me messing up? I think because the add thing isn't working right, um, the machine's so fast that if you don't release the key right away, it registers two strokes. Um, if you had this add push down and that was working, it wouldn't do that. It would block after one cycle, even if you kept holding the key down. But since this is not working, it doesn't do that. Let's try that again. That was me messing up, I know that. I forgot to clear this, but if I want to have nine two can that be a nine? I don't remember. I could play with this all day, but enter it once. I'm gonna clear this this time. That looks right. So maybe it's a little bit gummy on the carries or something. Um, hopefully it won't jam anymore at least. So um, so I have to figure this out: return clear and the multiplier. Let's see what the multiplier does if I. I don't think I have enough oil. Yeah, I don't think we fill that. Um, you can actually return these to their home position just by sliding them down and they latch in. Oh, it didn't feel too smooth. And then you can uh, slide this back over to its home position, but I want to put some oil on that shaft first. And the oil is empty. Um, overall though, I think we're making good progress so far. Okay, so I'm taking a look here at the multiplier. Uh, I got the shaft lit up and got the slid back over. Uh, there were a few things that were stuck on this. So you can move that out. See down in there, this thing right here. See that is a little, I can't move it now. That's the spring loaded. Um, bar attached to the spring up here. This is the other end of it. I can move it. There we go. See it? No, you don't see it. See it moving there? Um, that is what pushes the carriage over as you enter the numbers in. And that was stuck. So the carriage wasn't moving over, if you hit a number and it would just stay there, it wasn't shifting over like it's supposed to. So I got that freed up. Um, there was another piece on, on the bottom. There was, um, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically, if you see this ratchet shaft down here, that goes into a hole and hits against another shaft that was stuck, and that was preventing the carriage from returning all the way home. Uh, so we got those things freed up. So now this can 
go back home where it belongs. Um, enter a number. So enter there, one, two, three. This button up at the top here is, I guess, the mistake button. If you enter the wrong number, you push that. And I have tried that. Let's see if it works now. And you see it just clears out the multiplier of your number so you can enter another one. Let's see if it'll work on a big number like that. Yep. Okay, so let's see if this will actually multiply. Back up a little bit here. Let's try a simple 25 times 25. Just push the multiply button and see what it does. That's not right. Somebody's just trying to clear it repeatedly. So something is not quite right there. That's interesting. So nothing happened over there. We can try this again. Still stuck. Now, on the upside, I found out that that's the multiplication stop letter. So I'll figure out why that's sticking, but this piece seems to work. You know what, I wonder if a Q-Malt would work. I think that's this button. Because a Q-Malt would not try and clear it beforehand. Okay, this button goes there, a Q-Malt. We can try that just to see. That wants to work. Did something, but it didn't shift over like it was supposed to. Just enter 15. Doesn't seem right. I'm not quite sure what it did. Let's try it again. 25 here, 25 there. Poking some stuff in here. Nothing wants to engage. Stops though. So I'll have to take some look into, but um, getting further along. Okay, so making a little bit of progress here. This key sticks a little bit. I have to pull it back up, but other than that. You can see 625 and the result 390625. That seems to be okay. Um, let me go over some of the things that were stuck. I think I mentioned the big lever in here that pushes this over. That was stuck. Uh, there are also some things on the back that were stuck too. Okay, so around here on the back, I don't know if you can see this little tab thing here. Um, that and then these two over here are the clutches that engage the, this one's for the clearing mechanism here, and these two engage the couch shift either direction. This one was completely frozen, it wouldn't slide up at all, so that's why 
um, clearing wasn't working before because it couldn't engage this clearing mechanism back here. Um, there were a lot of issues I was having in this area over here. Um, I think this might have gotten shipping damage of some sort because um, this was out of alignment. Well, you can see this thing here slides down like that. But initially it was hitting on the throttle metal tab here because this had somehow been tilted out too much so it was ramming against there. Um, also, this little lever here that this pushes on was bent and wasn't going down all the way. Although I think that might have been me fiddling around with this mechanism might have bent that a little bit. But anyway, it's fixed now. Um, this is important especially for multiplication um, because this would actually engages the multiplication lever. So when you push a multiplication button, the first thing it does is move the carriage to home, and then once it's home, this thing is spinning, and it hits this and drives it down to engage this mechanism down here, and that's what starts the multiplication. So um, I'm not sure if I showed this in the video, but I was having an issue where the carriage would go to home, and then this would just sit here and spin, and it would actually start multiplying. So, um, Adjusting this backwards a little bit, this whole thing rotates here. I think it was this piece. Yeah, it was this piece. Um, the whole thing rotates its own. There's a little nut there. You can loosen that up and rotate it a little bit, which is what I did. Um, and that seemed to have fixed the problem so that this fully goes down and hits and engages that mechanism. Um, I don't think. There's anything else I wanted to mention. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is clean up some of the excess oil because I've gotten oil all over everything now. Like this whole thing is pretty much full of dirty oil. So I'm going to see if I can clean up a little bit of that. Uh, hopefully then I can put this back together. I'm not sure there's anything else that I wanted to mention. Um, it just took a while to try and figure out how everything was connected up. Um, especially this because I could see this moving, but it just wasn't moving quite far enough to actually engage the mechanism. So, yeah, hopefully we're in good shape now. Alright, let's see if this thing wants to work now. I can shift. the add key down so it should clear every time. Should be able to clear. I can and now I can disengage these so if I enter a number and then I want to keep the number in the top, I can turn that and it should only clear the bottom, which it does. If I turn it back, then it should clear the top, which it does. Okay, let's try multiplication. We'll do, take it off, add, favorite 625 times 625. You see the multiplier there? Let me raise this up just a little bit. Maybe you can see it now. See what happens. Uh, not quite. Got stuck a little bit there. That's stuck. Not sure if part of the case is interfering with that because it worked perfectly fine before I put the case on. As you saw, I think I demonstrated multiplication. I put the case on and now it's weird. Let's try again. It's a little bit sticky there, but now it worked. 625, 390, 65, that's correct. Let's see if it'll clear now. And something up with that, I'm not sure what. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so it might just be a little bit sticky. So what, what if happened if I how it worked. Anyway, let's try division.
looks good. Put my decimal point in there now that I have those back on. So multiplication gets a little bit stuck sometimes and clearing gets a little bit stuck sometimes, but hopefully those will loosen up as the machine um, works. But there's definitely plenty of oil in it now. So let's see if it'll now I'll clear, clear the keyboard. I'll try multiplication one more time. See if it works there. Well, anyway, 90% working. We'll go with that. So, I hope you like this look at uh, getting a Freedom Model S, not very common. So, the S10 because it has 10 keyboard columns. Sure. Lovely green decimal points there. Yeah, a little decimal point for our multiplier too. That's cool. Anyway, I hope you like this look at uh, uh, freeing up our Freedom Model S, getting it to work, we'll say 95%. Um, still gets stuck here and there, but definitely much better than it was when we got it. So, hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.